Thanks, Bob. First of all, for the Rocket defense, starting at the one defensive end is Ben Heiser, number 86, 6'3", 200-pound senior. At defensive tackle, Joey Ziegler, 78. He's 6'5", 265. He's a senior. The nose guard is Morgan Stevens, 5'9", and 190-pound junior. At the other defensive tackle will be either Mike Ewing. He's number 71. He's 6'2", 225. He's a sophomore. Or Kyle the Tank Stewart. He's 6'3", 215, and he's a junior. At the other defensive end is his brother, Troy Stewart. He's 6'2", 185, a junior. The linebackers are led by Dusty Rhodes, 6'2", 200-pound senior. Jeremy Hill, he's a 5'9", 200-pound junior. The quick corner is Sean Brennan, 5'9", 155-pound sophomore. The right corner is Nick Frisbee. He's a 5'10", 160-pound junior. The strong uh, safety is Naylan Arthur. He's not, where's number five? He's a 5'11", 165 pound junior. And the free safety tonight will either be Lee Lambert, six foot, 175 pounds, or Reagan Evans, 5'9", 155 pound senior. Portsmouth Smith Notre Dame has won the toss. They'll be doing the booting. So we'll pick it up right here. In the booth with us tonight, we're fortunate to have number 33, Matt Sowers. Matt was injured in the first uh, scrimmage of the season. He's rehabbing. We'll have him on at halftime. He's going to do our statting. If you're running where Larry Arthur is tonight, I imagine his bride-to-be is wondering the same question. He's, he's been kidnapped by a group of his friends, and it's a bachelor party. Larry will be married tomorrow. So wish Larry and his lovely bride all the best. And we're ready to do the booting. Doing the booting for the Titans is number 26. That's Andrew Graff. He'll do the booting deep for the Rockets. It's Evans, Arthur, and Kendrick. Scratch it. That's Brennan. I'm sorry. Sean Brennan. As Bub said, the Rockets trying to bounce back from a very emotional loss at Jackson. And we don't want to replay that ball game, but the uh, score did not indicate the effort put out by both teams. End over end kick, taking it to 15. Ball's loose. The Rockets are going to fall on it. Wisely, that's Andy Canterbury. He falls on the ball at the 25, and the Rockets go first and 10 at their own 25. First series for the Rockets. Looking at the Titan defense, they're led by Nathan Burnett, 6'2", 156-pound senior, and Andrew Graff, a 5'9", 153-pound freshman. We'll fill them in for you. Phillips brings them up under the center. First play comes up the middle. Matt Hatton gets very little on the play, gain of about a yard. Titans bring everybody inside, and if they saw the scouting report, I'm sure that they're going to try to stop the run, make the Rockets try to pass the ball. The nose guard is Lance Bray, and he's a good one, 6'2", 252 pounds. The defensive tackles are Joe Saltzman and Jacob Emnett. Phillips under center, comes right back to Kendrick. Kendrick cuts it up, stays on his feet, gets out to about the 30-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. He's going to call it third and a long four. And the Rockets picking right back up where they started from. Phillips has him in the huddle. Third down, long forward ball right at the Rocket 30. Phillips brings him to the line of scrimmage. He sets him, comes right back up the middle. Hatton had a hole just for a moment, and it closed quickly. Give him a gain of two. It's going to bring up a punting situation for the Rockets, and they'll be doing, doing the booting from their own 32-yard line. like to say hello to all the folks at the O'Hillco festivities tonight, especially the fellas at the uh, Wellston Rotary booth where you get the best doggone hot dogs on the midway. Back to do the booting for the Rockets is number 42, Kyle Stewart. Nice snap back. Stewart gets a nice end over end kick up. Ball crosses a 50, fielded by the Titans at the 40 and a loss of three and give a lot of credit there to number 17, that's your quarterback, Matt Phillips as he makes a great hit. What you may not realize is Matt Phillips is probably a good inside linebacker as anybody we got on the field. 
did a great job at the JV level, but he's too valuable at quarterback to be on the defensive side of the ball. Notre Dame, or Horseman Notre Dame goes on the offense. At their 37, 10 minutes, nine seconds to go, no score in the ball game. Berkowitz gets it up the middle, and the pile moves, and a nice surge by the Notre Dame line early on, gain of about three on the play. Number 33, Joe Dupee, the ball carrier. Dupee, or not Dupee is the question. Joe Dupee, number 33, six foot, 205 pound senior. Three yards on the play, the ball right at the 41 yard line. Second down, seven yards to go. Notre Dame runs a pro set, brings the wide out to the right. Berkowitz under center, brings it back, counters back to number 34, and he goes down in a hurry by Joe Ziegler. Big Joe fills right back and does what you're supposed to do. We'll give him a gain of about a half a yard on the play. They brought the flanker, the flanker back through, and that's Joey Shannon. He's a 5'8", 150-pound senior. Tackled by Big Joe Ziegler. Third down and a long six or a short seven. Bring him left and right. Berkowitz brings it back. He's going to roll wide. Here comes Ben Heiser. Ben Heiser is, grabs a hole, and the ball's loose, and out of bounds, and a great job of Nick Frisbee, but great pressure by both defensive ends. Troy Stewart and Ben Heiser forces the in-error pass. It brings up a fourth and seven at the 41-yard line. Deep for the Rockets is number 20. That's Matt Kendrick along with number five, Nayland the Nailman Arthur. They're standing at their own 30-yard line. Back to do the booting is the quarterback, and that's Berkowitz. We've been coming down here about 10 years, and there's always a Berkowitz and a Saltzman. High snap, Berkowitz gets it down, gets a nice kick over, end over end. Arthur fields the ball, falls on it, and we're not sure. It looks like Notre Dame has it, so the turnovers come right back and bug the Rockets as the Rockets fumble the uh, punt at the 27. Notre Dame gets it back and goes first and 10 at the Wellston 26-yard line. So early on, the Rockets find themselves in another hole, not unlike their early start against the Jackson Ironman. We'll see if the Rocket defense can come right back and do what it has to do, and that's hold here. He brings them left and white, left and right wide receivers. Pro set, comes right up to gut, and that's Berkowitz on the carry. A nice fake by Berkowitz as he picks up over six yards on the play. Going to call long six, short seven. Second and three. And the Rockets linebackers bit for the first guy through. The quarterback wisely pulls it out and brings it down. The ball at about the 20 yard line. Second and three. Ball inside the 20. Eight minutes and eight seconds, no score. As they widen the field, bringing wide receivers left and right, comes right back. Brings it now to number one, and he goes down in a hurry, and that's Troy Stewart. And he says, get out of my backyard, bud. Daniel was the ball carrier. A loss on the play of about three. Going to call it third now and seven. Rocket defense showing a lot of quickness out there. Troy Stewart, quite honestly, folks, has come on. He's a man out there. Ben Heiser, uh, we're not sure, but we think he may have a uh, modeling contract with one of these swimsuit companies. <laughs> ben the body Heiser, his teammates call him. Berkowitz under center. Man in motion. Long count. Brings it right back. Fullback gets it on a great play. Second, third effort. Close to a first down, and I believe he picked it up, bub. Dupee's going to pick it up, and poor tackling by the Rockets. Allow the Titans to pick it up. Reagan Evans in on the play. Derek Wallace, the only Rocket who will not be playing tonight that played against Jackson. Ball's first and 10 at the Rocket 16. Berkowitz springs trips to the left, keeps everybody else inside. Look for him to run to the right. He can, brings it to the fullback. And he stays on his feet, picks up another four. And quite honestly, Bob, it looks like we're not getting the linebacker play uh, with this fullback coming back on a trap. Well, what's happening is, Bob, is, is we've talked about a little bit about their passing attack during the course of the week. And Notre Dame's just spreading the field out and making the linebackers walk outside 
which leaves the middle open, and the Notre Dame coaches have picked up on that, and they're just content on running the ball right now. Well, we'll see what Dusty Rhodes and the boys decide to do. Second down, three yards to go, ball right at the 11-yard line. Berkowitz under center, gets a snap. He wants to throw. Good rush for the Rockets. Kyle Stewart coming up. Berkowitz throws into the end zone, and that's going to be intercepted by Nick Frisbee as he runs it out, gets out to the five-yard line as... Kyle, the tank, Stewart, puts a lot of pressure on Borkowitz. He turns it over. A great play by Frisbee, Bob. Well, Stewart that time, Bob, made the quarterback make a decision. He came up and flat out just ran over the defensive back. I mean, just pancaked him in the backfield and put a lot of pressure on the quarterback and made him throw a, a, a duck pass in the air. And Nick Frisbee, playing a good center field there, just picked it up and uh, brought it out to the five-yard line for the Rockets. So here we go. Well, I bet you next time Nick will stay in the end zone when he got it on at 20. Here comes Phillips right up the middle. And the, the Titans are waiting. Quite honestly, Bob, they've got 11 guys in line scrimmage. Well, it looks like the Titans and Bob have done a nice job on scouting the Rockets last week against the Ironman because they're keying on uh, Matt Hatton right now. Hatton not picking up much yardage on that carry, gave him about a gain of one. Gain of a yard on the play. Rockets looking in a second and nine. Matt Phillips showing his versatility as he's bringing the plays in as a quarterback. Davy Adkins brings the line of scrimmage. Here comes a pass, oh, and it should pass. have been a play. Well, it looked like a little bumping going down the line, and uh, Matt Kendry could not get to the ball. Brings up a third and nine. Nice pass by Phillips, bub. It was a nice pad ball, pass, Bob. Again, like you said, uh, the uh, Titans' defense was very close coverage. Looked like a lot of bump and go right there, but nonetheless, no flag on that play. Well, we knew that these kids came to play, and they're a hard-hitting ball club. Quick count for the Rockets. Manhattan did not have very good putting. He goes down a gain of three on the play, and it's going to bring another punting situation up. Well, we're not seeing a real good, Bob, surge of the offensive line right now. We, we outsized the Titans up front, but uh, they're doing the same thing we done to Jackson last week, just clogging up the middle because that's what we done to Jackson last week was ran the ball very well, so they picked up on that. Well, Lance Bray, a 6'2", 252-pound uh, nose guard, has done a nice job. So Kyle Stewart will be punting it out of his end zone. Good snap, kicks up. End over end, nice kick all the way back to about the 47 yard line. The ball's loose, and the uh, Titans recover that one as this is looks like uh, a game of giveaway. Number 14 for the Titans. I'm trying to pick him up for 34, I'm sorry. For the, that was Joey Shannon tried to, to get the ball out. It ends up being about a 43, 46 yard punt for the Rockets. So the Titans go on offense for the second time at their own 48-yard line. Four minutes, 52 seconds to go. Berkowitz under center. Long snap. Berkowitz want to give it up the middle, and that's number 33, Joe Dupe. Dupe picks up six yards on the play, and Bub, they're just basically beating us at the line of scrimmage. Well, they're smaller and quicker, Bob, and uh, they're, right now they're controlling the line of scrimmage, running over the right side of their offensive line, be the left side of our defense, so we got to toughen it up on defense as they picked up six on that carry. Well, we got to get a little better play, and I think that's going to happen. Morgan Stevens, your nose guard. The defensive tackles are Ziegler and Stewart. Stewart and Heiser are your ends. Buckowitz going to bring this one out. He wants to keep it, and he goes down in a hurry, and that's... Our buddy, Jeremy Hill, comes up to make a play for a loss all the way back to the Rocket 47-yard line. So it's going to bring up third and seven. Four minutes to go here in the first quarter. We have no score. So the game, both teams, Bub, not unlike a prize fight, trying to sort of fill each other out, and both teams early on have had turned the ball over. Well, that's exactly right, Bob. I think you just nailed it down right there. Both teams just trying to see uh, what they can do against each other, and pretty, pretty evenly matched up ball game right now. The big difference is it's being played on our side of the field. Berkowitz under center. He has twins split out to the right. And he wants to throw it. Here comes Ben Heiser. And here goes Berkowitz as he's down. That's Morgan, the body Stevens. And they're saying he was down. And that was Ben Heiser, Joey Ziegler, and Stevens. So that was Ziegler, Heiser, and Stevens. Sounds like a law firm, bub. Morgan's 
pretty quick himself. He didn't give the uh, quarterback much of a chance to get outside and win it all their time. Big loss for the Titans. All the way back to the Titan 41, so it's going to be fourth down and about 17 yards to go. Back deep for the Rockets is the nail man, Nalen Arthur and Matt Kendrick. Berkowitz gets a nice punt away, and they're going to let this one bounce at the 30, and it's going to go inside and go dead right at the 28-yard line. So with two minutes and 40 seconds on the clock, we have no score, to, it's no score at Spartan Stadium. We're going to send it back to the state station for a 30-second timeout. Minutes, or excuse me, two minutes, 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. We have an official timeout, and with that timeout, we're going to run down some scores for you. Early on, Benton County leads Rock Hill 7 to nothing, and that's a road trip. And Jackson early on is up 7 to nothing over a good uh, Waverly ball club. So we wish both of our neighboring cities good luck tonight as the Vikings down at Rock Hill and the Armin host the Waverly Tigers. 7-0, Rockets go on uh, offense for the third time at their own 28-yard line. They bring in uh, everybody in tight, and it comes back to Hutchison. Hutchison on a sweep to the right, and he picks up two, and Bob, it looked early on like there was gonna be something there, but uh, the Titans come up and shut it down in a hurry. Again, we're not, we don't have, we're not seeing the size this week of our competitors last week, so therefore they're smaller and quicker and have the speed, but nevertheless, uh, Chris picked up about three on that carry. Second and seven for the Rockets. Coming back to Kendrick. Kendrick needs a block, and he got the block. He's outside. He's up to 35 to the 40. Stays on his feet to 45, all the way out to the 48-yard line. That'll be a first down, and Matt Kendrick showing you that he is a speed merchant. Well, showing his speed there, Bob, as he turned the corner, had an excellent block. He didn't pick up the blocker on that play that time, but nice job, uh, a lead block there for the Rockets as Matt Kendrick just turned in the afterburners and picked up about 15 on that. And that was Matt Hatton as they bring it all the way out to the 49-yard line. Two minutes, three seconds to go. Here comes Nalen Arthur. Matt. Matt Hatton gets a great block, but Nalen could not turn the corner, and he'll pick up two. But he gets it into Titan territory, Bob, so we're looking at second and eight. Well, the Rockets trying to get outside, but again, and, and, pick, and being a little successful here on this series, but it's going to be tough to do because the Titans are quick. and They're not large, but they're quick, and they're getting to the spot, but a nice lead block again that time by the uh, fullback. Matt Hatton with two great blocks. Dave Adkins brings him to the line of scrimmage. Ball comes back to Hutchinson. Hutchinson stays on his feet, gets down to about the 45-yard line, gain of about four on the play. Going to call it third and a long seven, short six. Let's mention a nice uh, offensive line surge that time by our big right tackle, number 75, Reggie Alexander, making the hole that side on the right side of the line uh, for the Rockets on that play, Bob. Third down, long four. Comes right back to Arthur. Arthur stutters, stays on his feet, gets inside the 40 all the way down to about the 38-yard line, and Nalen Arthur seeing the ball better now, Bub. Well, Bob, looks like the Rockets are doing some uh, different things up front on the Titans because the Titans were just uh, peeling their ears back and coming straight forward. So Coach Blackstone said, let's do something different on this series, and surely they are doing a little trapping up front now. Well, they're going to call it dead at the 40-yard line, first and 10 at the Titan 40. Here comes Arthur. Arthur gets everybody with him as Berkowitz comes up to make the tackle for no gain. Second and 10, the ball right at the same place. And the Titans, Bob, come to the ball. They swarm very well. Well, they they pursue very well. We need to, to uh, teach our little buddy Nalen to not to dance so much in the backfield and hit the hole and go, but we'll get it here in just a minute. Second and 10, the ball at the 40, no score. Phillips brings him down, comes right up the middle, Matt Hatton. And Hatton gets very little, and he's in that area where our buddy Lance Bray, all 252 pounds of him, is. And it's a gain of a yard on the play. Third and nine. And that's going to end the first quarter with the score Wellston nothing, Portsmouth nothing. We're going to send it back to the station for a 60 second timeout. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, to Spartan Stadium as the Rockets break huddle, ready to get action underway the second quarter. Phillips takes a snap, takes two steps back, throws over the middle to Kuhn, but incomplete. So call it fourth down and nine, ball on the Titans, 
39-yard line. So out comes the punting unit for the Rockets with 11.57 to go. Here in the first half, you're listening to Golden Rocket Football on WYPC AM 1330 and your local cable channel 15. A big hello to all of our Ohilco listeners back in Wellston tonight. Kyle Stewart back doing the punting duties tonight. Takes a snap, good snap, punts off, end over end kick. Not a deep kick by no means. Going to hit on about the 25-yard line, and Morgan Stevens is going to down it on the 23. So that's going to bring out the offensive unit for the Titans. Bob may have to help me here announcing some of these names. I'm not used to all these uh, <laughs> different names, but here we go. 11.50 to go in the first half, no score. Ball on the Notre Dame 24-yard line. Bukowitz under center, takes a snap, hands off to his tailback over the right side, hit immediately. Uh, no gain, possibly a short loss that time for the Titans. Dusty Rhodes on the tackle for the Rockets. Luke Daniels, the ball carrier for the Titans. No gain on that. Well, they're going to give him about a half a yard gain. Looked like he possibly was dropped for a loss that play, but nevertheless, he's going to pick up one. Call it second down and nine for the Titans. Bukowitz breaks huddle for the Titans. Single eye back filled with three guys wide to the left. Takes a snap, hands off to his tailback over the left side, and he is met in a gentle way by number 54, Jeremy Hill. And 78, the tiny man of the ball club, Joe Ziegler. So nice tackle that time again for the Rockets. Nice stop. Third down and eight. Ball on the Rockets. 26-yard line. 10.45 to go in the first half. Titans break huddle. Bukowitz breaks huddle for the Titans. Again, single eye backfield in the backfield. Wide right, three trips right, we'll call it. Bukowitz takes a snap, rolls to his right, pitches out to his right, and he's got some running room. Picks up the first down, but fumble. The Rockets going to recover, I hope. Yes, Rockets recover. A nice stick that time, Bob, by the Rocket. Defense, which popped that one loose. Well, I tell you what, it was a nice little shovel pass out there as they had three wide people sent them deep, and, and the one guy took a step back. And we've got a holding penalty against the Titans. That's going to be refused. The Rockets go on offense at their own 34, but great hit by the Rockets corner people, and that was Nick Frisbee and Reagan Evans come up and, and make a nice play. That was a, a nice looking play the Titans had that time as they faked to their fullback up the middle and pitched out to the right. If you're listening to us, we're going from left to right on your dial, heading right toward the river. Phillips takes a snap, hands off to Kendricks around the right side, has some running room, stays on his feet. He's going to pick up the first down and a little more. He's still driving. Give him a gain of about 12 on that carry, Bob. Well, you know, when you, when you watch Matt Kendrick, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but sort of like watching a pinball game. As he gets banked around, but he never falls down. He looks like a pinball out there, but he keeps going the right way. He's always running north and south and does a great job as he picks up about 11 on the play and gives us a first down. He could be your Timex runner for tonight, you think, Bob? Okay, takes a licking but keeps on ticking. Phillips under center, puts Kendricks in motion, hands off to Hutchison over the right side. He stays on his feet. He's going to be close to another rocket first down. Takes the ball all the way down to the Titans. We're going to call it the ball down on about the 12 yard line. Again, another nice gain by Chris Hutchison. Gain of uh, about nine on that carry, Bob. Another strong run by uh, Hutchison. Hutchison would not be tonight at the line of scrimmage and picks up eight extra yards. Phillips takes a snap, hands off to Hutch over the left side. He's going to pick up the first down. One note we want to make tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we've only had one flag so far the first half with 9.31 to go in the first half. Only one flag so far. First down, Rockets. Ball on the tight and 11-yard line. Rockets on the move. Phillips breaks huddle under center once again for the Rockets. Hatton in the backfield. Phillips hands off the Hutch right up the middle. He's going to pick up about five on that carry. Take the ball all the way down to the Titan six-yard line. Hutchison ran so hard, it ended up being Naylan Arthur. Naylan Arthur picks up five and uh, showing a great deal of diversity in the backfield. Matt Hatton, unselfishly, has been really leading the blocks, and when he shut the fullback down, it opens it up for the tailback. 
Phillips hands off the Hutch over the left side. Not much room, but he gets, somehow gets away. Gain possibly of about three. Let's see where they mark it. So Hutch doing a nice job of dodging a couple defenders that time. Puts the ball down on the four-yard line. Rockets definitely on the move. 8.44 to go in the first half. Hutch goes out. Arthurs comes in. See if the Rockets can punch it in here. Third down and goal to go. Ball on the four-yard line. Phillips under center. Takes a snap. Hands off to Arthurs over the right side. Touchdown, Rockets. Well, the Golden Rockets, Bob, strike first here tonight. And it's a good feeling to strike first, but I tell you, when Naylan Arthur came in to run the play, you just knew he was going to get the ball. Very determined young man. He goes in from about four yards out and a nice play by the Rockets. Well, that could be the deciding factor of the ball game so far. That's the first score of the night with 8.29 to go in the first half. Rockets get on the board first. Number 16, Fortner back to do the extra point duties for the Rockets with Hatton on the hold. The snap is off. Good snap. Kicks high, a little short, but makes it. All right. Rockets get on top here first with seven to go. Seven to nothing. Rockets strike first. 8.29 to go in the first half. Rockets on top, seven to nothing over the Titans. We're going to send it back to the station for a word from our sponsor. Gentlemen, and a big hello to all of our family and friends up at the Ohilco tonight with the big festival going on in Wellston. Rockets strike first here tonight at Spartan Stadium. They go on top of the Notre Dame Titans, seven to nothing, with 8:29 to go in the first quarter. Bob, Rockets put it, put together a nice, impressive drive that time. Well, I'm sure that uh, Coach Blackstone had the opportunity this last time to talk to the offense, and they they came out and were a lot stronger and a little more determined. I think this is a ball team that's still looking for its identity. It's still trying to find out what kind of ball club it's going to be. Fortner kickoff down to the 25. Not a lot of room that time as he just got sandwiched by number 88 of the Rockets and number 35. That looked like Hank Hager with a nice stick that time on defense. Chris Tanner was number 88, so the special uh, team players getting an opportunity and they're making most of that. A reminder that next Monday, the Rockets host the Wheelersburg Pirates in a JV contest. So more good things coming up Monday. That'll be interesting. Mukowitz breaks huddle for the Titans. Two set backfield, takes a snap, hands off to his back over the left side. A little bit of running room, but a nice job again that time by the defenders, defensive backs. Number 26, Sean Brennan, and number seven, Reagan Evans. Bob comes up to make the stop. Yeah, Reagan Evans is a lot of fun to watch out there because he's just looking for somebody to hit. He's been playing a split end, hadn't had an opportunity to play a whole lot of defense, but he's one of these kind of kids that likes to get to the ball and put a uh, lick on you. Okay, they gained two on that carry was the Titans. Again, we have a double set backfield or what we call a wing T backfield. Bukowitz under center once again. Puts his wing back in motion, rolls to his right, takes a snap, handoff over the right side. Big hole that time for the fullback, stays on his feet. Nice looking runner that time for the Titans as he picks up the first down for the Titans. Bob, they're doing something to us up front. Have you picked up on that yet? Well, I think we're getting overplay by the uh, defense. It looks like you got to give Berkowitz a lot of credit as he's a master of putting the ball in and taking it out. But Dupee, uh, quite honestly, on his own, picks up the first down with a real strong run. So credit that one to the Titans offensive line and, and a real nice job by the fullback, Dupee. Okay, that puts the ball down still on the Titans' own 43-yard line as Bukowitz breaks huddle. Dupee in the backfield for the Titans. Bukowitz puts a man in motion to his left. Long count, takes a snap, rolls to his left. He's got Stewart in his face. No place to go. True Troy Stewart comes from all the way from the left side to put Bukowitz on his back once again, Bob. Troy Stewart showing some nice speed, but we've got an injured rocket down on the play right now. Hopefully it's not gonna be too serious. I, uh, with a lot of help there, that was Dusty Rhodes and Kyle Stewart. So the Rockets knew early on that, that they had to come in and pressure the quarterback and they're not afraid to bring those linebackers. So it looks like we've changed up on the defense where they're gonna read them and, and let Dusty go after the guy. Loss of seven on that play as Bukowitz rolled to his left, but Troy Stewart said that not tonight. And Joe, and Joe Ziegler, Bob Walton just informed me. Uh-oh. Yep, Joe Ziegler down on the play for the Rockets. And that's not a good situation. Uh, appears to be in some pain, uh, pointing to his 
left leg with 647 to go in the first half. Rockets on top of the Titans, seven to nothing. As we have a timeout here on the field, we're gonna take a timeout as well and send it back to the station for a 30 second timeout from our sponsors. Early lead of seven to nothing with 647 to go in the first half. Joe Ziegler was able to be assisted off the field. Appears to be a leg injury, but hopefully he'll be okay. I think he'll be all right. Bukowitz breaks huddle and puts number 21, his wide receiver, Newton, out to his far right, puts 34 in motion. Shannon in motion to his left. Bukowitz takes the snap, rolls to his right, has some room, but Troy Stewart comes up, makes the pitch. Nick Frisbee comes up nicely. I tell you what, nice defensive read that time, Bob, by the Rockets. That play had potential to go a long way, but the defensive backs for the Rockets collapsed very quickly. Well, we've only seen two quarterbacks, but quarterbacks, but Booker was, is really a good quarterback. He does a great job, reads well, and he's a smart player. Done a nice job again by running the fake uh, up to the middle, and then kind of, it, it's almost a half rollout. Uh, looks like it could be a pass, but Bukowitz pitches it. But a short gain, give him a gain of two, and still third down and about 13. Bukowitz under center again for the Titans. Two set backfield on offense. He puts his Daniels in motion to his left. Bukowitz takes the snap, rolls to his left. Throws it a Hail Mary up in the air again. That wasn't even close. That was 10 yards out of bounds. As Bukowitz, uh, Bob, I think possibly we're getting to him a little bit. He's getting a little antsy possibly in the backfield. Well, I think he's been hit early and often enough that he doesn't want to hang on to the ball. He wants to get rid of it. So once again, good defensive pressure for the Rockets. This brings up fourth down and 14 for the Titans. Ball on their own. 39-yard line, 5-31 to go in the first half. Rockets lead 7 to nothing. Bukowitz back doing the punting for the Titans. Back deep for the Rockets, you have uh, Sean Brennan and Nalen Arthurs. Bad snap goes over Bukowitz's head. That could be trouble. He tries to get away and does somehow, and a, not a bad punt. And we have a flag on the play. The snap went over to Bukowitz's head, went right clear down to his 10-yard line. He somehow got the punt off. I didn't see it. Bob, can you tell us what happened? Well, they're going to call roughing the punter, but once the ball goes over his head, he's now a runner, and that's not on. It's not like you can't rough him now. Coach, Black Coach Blackstone noticing that and talking to the referee also. comes out. Coach Blackstone comes out on the field and talks uh, to the referee. Be that as it may, they're going to count it off anyhow, and that's going to give the Titans an automatic first down. Coach Blackstone has a legitimate, legitimate complaint there, Bob. 5.18 to go in the first half. Rockets lead 7-0. Coach Blackstone still giving the, the official Bob on the far sideline an earful. Well, I think it's con rightly so. He's just saying now when the, once the ball goes over the guy's head, he muffs it, he is a runner, and he's not protected. Okay, Bukowitz under center. Ball on the rocket, 46-yard line. Bukowitz takes a snap, quarterback sneak, goes over the right side, picks up some yardage. He's going to gain about five on the carry. Bukowitz that time on the carry on the quarterback sneak, Bob, over the right side. And a punishing blow by Reagan Evans, but a gain of about six on the play. Dusty Rhodes on, on the tackle, along with the left side of the Rocket defense. Call it second down and five. 4.45 to go in the first half. Rockets lead 7-0. Bob Walton and Matt Sowers up here in the press box with us. Matt doing the stats for us this evening. We'll get him on at halftime. Bukowitz under center again. Puts his wing back in motion again to the left. Takes a snap, hands off to his fullback over the left side. Somehow gains about three on that carry. Going to be close to a Titan first down. Takes the ball down to the Rocket 36-yard uh, line. Well, uh, Luke Daniel, real smart runners. He's stuffed at the line of scrimmage, but manages to fall forward to pick up two yards. Third down and two for the Titans. Ball on the Rocket 37-yard line. 4.01 to go here in the first half. You're listening to Golden Rocket Football on WYPC AM 1330 and your local cable channel 15. Well, Bukowitz once again breaks huddle for the Titans. He's got a full house backfield. 
Puts Shannon in motion to the left. Bukowitz takes a snap, hands off, fumble on the play, but the Titans appear. We'll see what happens. It appears that the Titans possibly recovered their own fumble. So it's going to make a fourth down and a loss of one on the play. So fourth down and a long four. See what the Titans decide to do here. Possibly Bob maybe go for it at this point in the field. Well, he's over there in Stewartville with Troy and Kyle, and they literally put the pop on him. The ball came out. Fourth and four for the Titans. Uh, they've had some success running the ball on the Rockets tonight. 3.05 to go here in the first half. They're going to punt it but look out for the fake. Rockets not going for the punt at all. They're gonna punt it. Bukowicz puts a nice end over end punt, punts it out of bounds, and that's gonna take a tight and roll and go out of bounds on the Rocket three yard line. So they done their job, Bob, by being able to punt the ball out of bounds there. Not a bad play by the Titans. Well, Bob, you're inside the 40. There's two minutes and 50 seconds to go. I, I don't know if you played for field position. I don't think that says a a whole lot about your confidence in the offense. Okay, 2.50 to go in the first half. Rockets on top, seven to nothing. Phillips and company breaks huddle for the Rockets. You have Hatton, Hutch, and Kendrick in the backfield. Handoff goes to Hutch over the left side, right side. He's gonna gain about six on that carry. 2.43 to go in the first half, clock ticking. Rockets need to get in a hustle up offense here. Give Hutch a gain of about six on that carry call. It's second down and four. Staying in the backfield again is Chris Hutchison and Matt Hatton. Handoff goes to Hutch over the left side. He's got some running room again. He's going to gain about another six or seven on that carry. Picks up the first down, Bob. Well, you ride that mule until he can't go any farther, and Hutchison showing a lot of strength, good leg strength coming through because he's being hit at the initial line of scrimmage, and he's dragging people. Okay, Matt Phillips breaks huddle for the Rockets. Still, he has Matt Hatton in the backfield as well. Well, Nalen Ithers comes in now, tries the same play over the right side, gains about two on the carry. Let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, what the Rockets are operating with. We've got, we have one sophomore in the backfield, one junior. We've got a whole host of new players this year on the line. So the Rockets, Bob, again, starting to put together a little ground attack here. Well, they sure, certainly are. One of those new players is Chad Coon, and he wants to send his best back to his mom and his brothers and sisters back in Wellston. Rockets have a long way to go with a minute 59 to go in the first half. Rockets on top of the Titans, seven to nothing. Ball on the Rocket, 22 yard line, and we've got a timeout on the field, but we're gonna hold it right here. Joining us at halftime is uh, number 33 for the Rockets, Matt Sowers. Out for just a few more weeks with the leg injury. But some good reports saying that uh, he's going to be back wearing the blue and white, or blue and gold on the field here, hopefully in a couple weeks. Again, a big hello to all of our listening fans back in Wellston. Everyone's celebrating our Ohilco Festival. You are listening to Golden Rocket Football on WYPC AM 1330 and your local cable channel 15. Just a reminder, it's getting dark, so they'll turn the wattage down on the radio side. So if you can get to cable channel 15, unless you're within probably a mile or two of the receiver, you'd be better off going to cable channel 15 right now. Arthur's the carry that time. He gains some nice yardage for the Rockets. Gain of about uh, eight on that carry. Give it third down. Nothing doing on that play. Going to be close to a first down, but I believe Arthur's is going to be short on that carry. With a minute 30 to go in the first half, clock still ticking. Rockets offense needs to hustle back into the huddle and possibly get off another play. Fourth down and, a, and not a bad play for the Rockets. Fourth down and about a foot to go, Bob, for a first. Well, and uh, Notre Dame taking the timeout thinking the Rockets are probably going to pump, but when Coach Blackstone comes out on the field, they're not going to punt the ball. Look for somebody to go someplace and pick that first down up. Well, we've, we have a timeout on the field. We're going to take a 30-second timeout and send it back to the station for a word from our sponsors. Back here live at Spartan Stadium where the Golden Rockets uh, automatically going to pick up the first down as the Rockets broke huddle. Matt Phillips brought the Rockets out, Bob, and used the old uh, hut, hut routine and drew, drew the Titans offside. 
And everybody says that Larry Blackstone is not innovative. He, he put that old Elmer Fudd play in there and picks us up the first down. Phillips again, minute 31 to go in the first half. Rockets on top, 7-0. Puts Kendrick in motion to his left. Phillips was a keeper around the right side. He's going to pick up the first down and more. Gain of about 12 that time from Matt Phillips as he done a fake handoff to Kendrick around the left and kind of just put the ball on his right hip. Went around the right side and gained some nice yards for the Rockets. Phillips takes the snap, hands off to Matt Kendrick around the left side. He's got some running room. Good night, Irene. Could he go all the way? Takes it down to the Rockets, or to the Titan, rather, 26-yard line as the Rockets ran the old counter play that Coach Blackstone is so famous of running with a minute 10 to go in the first half. Rockets ready to strike again. Rockets on the move. We have a flag on the play. See what happens. Doesn't look good. We have a clipping on the Rockets. Bob, does that go from the spot of the foul? Should go right from the spot, and that's, we'll see where the referee's going. So they're going to bring it back, and it's going to bring it back probably about the original line of scrimmage. With a minute 10 to go in the first half, that is exactly right. As a matter of fact, it's going to be sh one yard short of the original line of scrimmage. So the Rockets broke a nice play there by number 20, Matt Kendrick, but shooting themselves in the foot with a clipping penalty. Phillips under center. They take the snap. Goes to Arthurs over the right side. Nice move by Naylon Arthurs as he's going to pick up about seven on that carry. 57 seconds to go in the first half. We have a timeout on the field. Well, the Rockets take a timeout, and with the timeout on the field, we're going to send it back to the station with the score of Wellston 7, Notre Dame nothing. Matt Phillips breaks huddle for the Rockets. Drops back three steps, has a man down the sidelines. It could be interesting. Caught by Nathan Arthurs. Takes the ball all the way down to the Titan. 12-yard line, Matt Phillips complete to Naylon Arthurs down the left side of the field. 30-yard pass completion that time to Naylon Arthurs with 50 seconds left to go in the first half. Rockets on the move once again. Phillips under center takes the snap, hands off to Hutch over the right side. Hutch stays on his feet. I'll tell you what, Chris Hutchison, Bob, has done a nice job by uh, running the ball tonight, holding on the ball tonight with both hands as well. I think everybody's doing a much better job, and I think as the game goes on, you're going to see conditioning in the numbers game really pop up. Phillips under center, takes a snap. Bootleg, oh, he's got a man in his face. Can he get loose? There's nobody around him. Will he get in the end zone? Touchdown, Rockets. Touchdown, Matt Phillips for the Rockets. As he ran the bootleg bomb that time to the left, the Titans had him drop for the loss, just one man. But Matt Phillips showing his strength, eluding that tackler and getting in for six. You know, you hear the terminology, shedding a tackler. That's what Matt Phillips did. Just out, just a case of where he was just stronger. He uh, just out-muscled it. Okay, Rockets on to do the extra point. Fortner to do the kicking duties tonight. Good snap. Hatton on the hold. Fortner's kick is up. Short, but it's good. Rockets... On top again, Bob, with 21 seconds to go in the first half. Rockets on top of the Titans, 14 to nothing. We're going to send it back to the station for a word from our sponsors. We're ready whenever you are. I'm going to go ahead and start talking just for the new purpose on the camera. I'm going to go ahead and start it. We'll just pick it up whenever we can. All right, I'm going to lay the phone down. We're going to pick it up now. Okay, Rockets, we got a fumble on the play as Fortner's kickoff. A nice job, and the Rockets are going to recover with 17 seconds to go in the first half. Could have, Bob, that have been a Coach Blackstone squib kick, possibly? Tanya, he reminds me of a Ralph Einstein, Albert's brother. This guy just comes up with new wrinkles and everything, and yes, a great squib kick, and the credit all goes to the goat. Rockets trying to score once again. Phillips takes a snap. He drops back three steps. Same play to the other side. He's got Kendrick. Oh! 
Oh, I tell you what, folks, that very easily could have been a pass interference because the defender was waving the arms right in Kendrick's face. Well, it's not zebra season, but what we could probably say is that uh, they were not in a very good position to make that call. They were 20 yards behind the play, and that back judge has got to be deep enough to look out for that. 12 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Rockets, uh, first half, rather. Phillips under center, hands off the hat and over the left side. He's going to gain about five on the carry. Rockets calling for a timeout. We're going to hold it right here to update you on just what happened. If you're just joined us back here, uh, the Rockets uh, took the kickoff, rather, and Fortner's squib kick. Rockets was able to come up with the fumble on the play, and that's where we stand right now at 7.6 seconds to go here in the first half. Bob, the Rockets jump out to a 14-0 lead over the Titans. Well, Bob, you know, you, I've seen just improvement all, the, all over the place, but I think when you look at the special teams, special teams last week probably got the uh, brunt of the coaches ire on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, and they have come up with a turnover. They've given real good protection for the punter, and they have not allowed Forceman Notre Dame to get any kind of a big run back, and they got a takeaway. So the special teams play a lot better this week. So the Rockets jump out to a lead here tonight. They're going to try to score again before half with 7.6 seconds to go in the first half. Rockets break huddle. You have Matt Hatton in the backfield as well as Chris Hutchison. Goes to Kendrick over the right side. He's got some running room. That could be trouble. He gets outside. Will they catch him? Matt to the 10, 5, down to the 4-yard line. Gets out of bound, bounds, and time runs out. But I'll tell you what, Bob, nice piece of coaching that time by the Walston coaching staff and coach Larry Blackstone as that's going to end the first half. That's, that's going to be the problem.
Very interesting right now, Bob. I see the Titans kind of walking around out on the field, and I see Rockets running in and out constantly. So that could be a major factor here in the second half. Well, if you'll see a walking Rocket, you'll see a non-playing Rocket. Hutchison, and boy, he was popped. They may be tired, but they haven't been hit. And that was number 65 for the Titans. 
Try to line that guy. Dupee. Dupee with the pop. No gain on the play. Second and ten. Under center. Brings it back. Comes up the middle to Hatton. Hatton stays on his feet. Gets all the way out past the 40 to the, about the 43-yard line. And Matt Hatton picking up right where he left off against the Ironman. Well, give the line some credit there, Bob. They made a nice hole there for, for Matt to carry. He's going to gain about 10 or 11 on that carry. He's going to give the Rockets another first down. We're going to give him 12 on the play. 10, 10, 15 to go here in the third quarter. Wellston leads at 14 and nothing. Phillips under center comes right back to Kendrick. If he gets a good kick out block by Hatton, which he did, he's going to pick up the first down. Stays on his feet. He's now inside the 40 to the 30. Stays on his feet and gets all the way to the 26-yard line. Great block again by Matt Hatton. Bob, this guy, just he's like a greasy pig. I mean, he, he gets outside on you and breaks a couple tackles. Hard to bring down. He looks like he's just skating out there, but he's really pretty quick. Gain of 32 yards on the play. First and 10 for the Rockets at about the 27-yard line. Phillips brings him to the line of scrimmage. Gets his cadence. Ball comes right up the middle to Hatton, and there's going to be a, a, a motion penalty on the Rockets as Hatton would have picked up about five on the play, maybe six, but it's going to come back. And we had movement in the backfield, so it's going to be a five-yard walk-off against the Rocket. So it takes it back to about the 32-yard line. It's going to be first and 15. Nine minutes, 44 seconds to go. The Rockets lead it 14 to nothing. That's the third penalty on the Rockets tonight. And at this point, I don't think Notre Dame has a penalty. Very much an error-free game as far as penalties for both teams. Phillips brings them to the line of scrimmage. He barks the signals. It's going to be the keeper. Phillips stays on his feet, gets back to about the original line of scrimmage. Going to call at second and 11, Bob. I think Matt, Bob, had his mind up. He was going to, that was supposed to be an option play that time. I think he just made his mind up that he was going to run it on that play. and Could have possibly had something outside, but maybe that was a test play. See what happens here. Well, he's the quarterback. He gets the ball first, and if he wants to run it, he's going to do it. Brings it back. He pitches deep now to Hatton. Hatton gets a good block and slips. Quite honestly, folks, the field may be just getting a little wet as Matt Hatton's feet went out from underneath him. Yeah, you can see the field glare a little bit right now as the dews start setting, settling down on the field. It's hard to keep your footing at this point in the ball game. So there'll be no gain on the play, no loss either. Third and 11, the ball right at the 31-yard line. Eight minutes, 43 seconds to go. Wellston leads it 14 to nothing. Phillips under center. Long snap, comes right up to the middle of the hat, and he gets very little. And it's going to bring a fourth down. And there's a fumble on the play, and a Rockets bugaboo comes back to haunt them as the Titans will take over at their own 30, scratch that, at their own 27-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for the Titans. Well, once again, uh, the handoff exchange tonight creating a problem for the Rockets as they was moving the ball, but again, turnover uh, kind of gets us in the tail there. Okay, here come the Titans. They have it first and 10, 8 minutes, 29 seconds. Buckowitz comes under center. He brings receivers left and right. Comes right up the middle to Dupee, and Dupee coughs it up. The Titans will cover it, though as the lineman there, number 54, for the uh, Titans picks the ball. Dupee gets, uh, they're gonna give him a gain of a half a yard, and a very liberal half yard that was. So we're gonna call it second, and a long nine, short 10. Buckowitz brings him to the line of scrimmage. He brings wide receivers, twins to the right, and a single receiver wide to the left. Rockets drop a linebacker back. Buckowitz takes the ball. He fumbles it, comes up to Dupee. Dupee tries to get away, but gets very little. And I'm telling you, both teams are headhunting out there. If you're standing around, you better watch out. Make a note here, Bob. We have Branch Usley in at left tackle, replacing Joe Ziegler. Great move for Brand Us or Branch Usley. You hate to see anybody go down, but Branch Usley, once again, worked very hard to get in that position as the, the Titans, rather, are looking at a third down, third and seven. I keep on calling the Spartans, but it's the uh, Portsmouth Titans, the uh, Notre Dame Titans, as they'll bring them 
twin receivers wide to the right, and they bring the long split in to the left. Buckowitz brings it back. He wants to throw. He's coming short and cannot get it to the short. The tight end, that was uh, Nathan Burnt as uh, Jeremy Hill had single coverage and a nice pass by Berkowitz, but give Jeremy Hill a lot of credit. Uh, Bob, I'm counting seven new defensive players on the field for the Rockets on that series. Kids that did not play, two kids that didn't even play at all last year. Well, it just goes with the rebuilding program. Back to do the punting is Berkowitz. Seven minutes, seven seconds, a high snap, and the Rockets may get this one. And he uh, punts it outside to the 50-yard line. And I'll tell you one thing, you got to give this fine quarterback, Nate Berkowitz, a lot of credit. He almost had the uh, Emmy for the best actor as he fell down again in the crowd one and a roughing the punter. Well, you want the guy back there that you know can catch the ball. That ball was a high snap, and Berkowitz able to go up and grab a hold of it, number one, and then get the snap off and get the punt off before it was blocked. So nice job for uh, the quarterback there. Adkins brings him to the line of scrimmage. Ball at the 50. Comes right back to Kendrick. Kendrick's going to keep it. Kicks it inside. Now back outside. He's at the 40. He jitterbugs. Stays on his feet. A great block as he's inside the 20 and goes down about the 15-yard line. Flag on the play, unfortunately, as one of the rocket linemen will be uh, guilty of either a clip or a block in the back as uh, your help people trying to make a good block for you, unfortunately, is going to be a penalty and bring it back. Well, I don't know exactly what the call is yet, Bob, but uh, Coach Blackstone once again giving him an earful on the far sideline. Well, they're saying that he uh, blocked into the back, and back it's going to be, back on but it's going to be a 10-yard walk off, and Bub Norris vainly arguing for the Rocket offense, but unfortunately it falls on deaf ear. Six minutes, 48 seconds to go. The Rockets lead at 14 to nothing. The ball back at the original line of scrimmage. We're going to call it, well, now they're going to move it back the other way. Second quarter, Valley, fourth thing. They're going to be uh, an additional four-yard mark off as the officials had mismarked the ball. It's going to be first and 15 for the, first and 15 for the Rockets. Ball now inside the Rocket 50 at the 45. Well, Bob, they called that on Manhattan number 24, but he had a great block, and the defender just turned around, and they called it on Matt for some reason. That'll be another penalty against the Rockets as we had movement in the uh, left side of the Rockets' offense, and it's going to be another five-yard walk-off. It's going to be now first and 20 for the Rockets. And I tell you, I don't know who's going to get the most valuable player, but I know the hero award should go to Bub and I as this mic is biting us left and right. So if you hear a little scream, it's just the mild shock we're getting from a short in this microphone. Six minutes, 32 seconds to go. The ball now at the Rocket 40. So the Rockets having 20 yards and penalties on this one drive. Comes right back. Kendricks needs a block. He gets it. He stays on his feet. Gets all the way over the 50 down to the 48. So we pick up 12 of those, Bub. Same play, Bob, that they, that they got flagged on two plays ago when Manhattan or when Kendrick went the other way. The defender done the same thing, turned his back on Matt intentionally, and Matt blocked him anyway, and they put two plays ago, they caught the football. Well, we're going to get uh, Bub on the O.J. Simpson defensive team here as he argues vainly for his boys. Ball come up the middle. Hatton stays on his feet, breaks a block, gets all the way down to the Spartan 42. Call it third and a long yard. I tell you, Bob, I, I just love to watch Matt Hatton run the ball. He runs the ball like you'd like to see your fullback run it with both hands on the ball and keeps the knees of chopping and high in the air. So nice job there by Matt Hatton. Five minutes, 37 seconds to go. The ball third and a yard at the uh, Titan 41-yard line. Phillips under center. Long count. Options back to Naylan Arthur. Naylan gets a good block by Hutchison. He gets it over the 35, inside the 30, all the way down to the... 29-yard line, Bob. Bob, the, the offensive backs of the Rockets, the lead blockers, doing an absolutely fantastic job of lead blocking as they're making the way for Matt Kendrick and uh, Chris Hutchison and Naylan Arthur. Take your hat off to the guys up front, too, like Reggie Alexander and a couple of those other big hosses we have on the offensive line. Hutchison with the ball gets little or no gain on the play. We're going to call it second, second and nine. Give him almost a yard on the play as the Titans 
look like they're doing some stunning on the inside people as they're committing 11 people to the line of scrimmage here. So the Rockets, if they can get through this initial surge, could break a long run. Four minutes, 51 seconds to go. The Rockets lead at 14 to nothing inside the Titan 30-yard line. Double reverse back to Kendrick. Kendrick getting into some heavy traffic, picks up about six on the play. Call it third and a long seven, short six. Matt Kendrick, we knew, was explosive every time he touched the ball. But quite honestly, Bub, are you surprised with the amount of carries that Matt Kendrick's getting tonight? Well, he's a pretty quick and elusive runner, doing a nice job. Ball at the 24-yard line, 4.16 to go. Phillips gets it right up the middle, Naylan Arthur. Naylan hurdles one runner, breaks the tackle, gets inside the 20, all the way down to the 16-yard line. Bob, you can see the conditioning really taking effect right now as Coach Blackstone playing players just on one side of the ball where the Titans have to play a lot of kids both ways, so that really taking a toll right now. And I tell you, we would be remiss if we don't point out that Chad Bowman getting an opportunity to play the split in. He's doing a great kickout job on his blocking, too. Phillips under center. Brings it back. He options back to Hatton. Hatton gets a great block by Arthur, and Hatton's going to come in all the way from the 15-yard line. Count that one for the Rockets. Johnny Linder, the brainchild of this organization, calls a great uh, play from up in the press box. Well, he's getting a little excited over there, too. I'm glad to see tonight. I'm not the <laughs> only one up there that gets a little rambunctious. Well, I tell you, it's one thing to know that uh, if you listen to our games, it's always zebra season here. We, we uh, have a tendency <laughs> to say things, but we do it in love and jest. On to do the kicking is John Wayne Fortner. Ball's down, it kicks up, and it is good. And then with the score now, 21 to nothing, 3.50 to go. We're going to send it back to the station for a word from one of our sponsors. Stevie Boy. Yeah.
by calling 858-5056. Open Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., Saturday, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., and closed on Sundays. That's the West Side Video on Galena Pike in West Portsmouth. Star Dry Cleaners located at 2022 8th Street in Portsmouth are proud supporters of American Legion Baseball. If you need your clothes cleaned to a star specifications, then head to Star Cleaners, 2022 8th Street in downtown Portsmouth. Or call them at 353-6889. And don't forget, now's the time to have those school jackets cleaned for back to school. For premier cleaning, go to Star Dry Cleaners, 2022 8th Street in downtown Portsmouth. And the kickoff now from the Trojans is fielded and moving it up the field is Reed, and he's going to be hit at the 30-yard line and brought down right there. So the Siders will go into action first and 10 from the 30-yard line and add another uh, another lightning quick strike by the Trojans. Uh, hey, that's just what we said that the Siders wanted to avoid. And the Trojans are going to come out and continue to do what they did in the first half with the same type of offense. Siders were uh, not able to get it done again. Kia Brown breaking tackles left and right. And the Siders start out now, first and ten. Then the fullback stags in motion. And here comes the option play, and the pitch is a little bit short, but uh, caught, and I think we're going to have a face mask penalty. Come to the line of 
of scrimmage again in that wishbone formation. Hart calls the signal. And the give is to Kyle Phillips. He finds a little seam on the left side and breaks it out for about a seven, maybe eight yard gain. And Phillips has been a bright spot there. Her name here for you in just a moment. Back deep for the Rockets. Number seven, Reagan Evans. And number 26, Sean Brennan. Kick comes to Brennan. Nice kick that time down to the 15 yard line. Brennan takes it to 15, 20. Brings it out, does a juke step, goes around the right side. 25, does a lot of east and west running, tries to stay on his feet. Brings the ball out to the 27-yard line of the Rockets where the offensive unit, Reggie Alexander, Harry Turner, and a whole host of Rocket linemen coming out on the field at this time. 7.05 to go in the contest. Rockets on top, 28-6. to six. You are listening to Golden Rocket Football on WYPC AM 1330. As Phillips and company breaks huddle, puts Kendrick in motion. Handoff goes to Hatton up the middle, gains 10 yards, 15 yards. Nice piece of running that time, Bob, by Matt Hatton. Great job by Matt Hatton, but really the interior of this rocket line beginning to take control of the line of scrimmage as they just did a great job blowing that hole open. Gain of about 18 on the play. Over the right side that time was, was the Rockets' interior lineman. That was Reggie Alexander and Craig Brown over the right side. So back in the backfield, we have a timeout on the field. Looks like we've got an equipment problem. We have an equipment problem on the field right now as a timeout, official timeout. So we're going to take another timeout and send it back to the station once again for all those good, from all those good folks at the radio building. Matt Sowers joining us tonight in the press box. And I'm Bub Norris bringing you the action tonight from down on the river in Portsmouth, Ohio, where the Wellston Golden Rockets lead the Notre Dame Titans 28 to 6. With Rockets break huddle. Matt Phillips breaks the huddle, sends Kendrick in motion. It goes to Kendrick to the right side. Turns it upfield, gains about three on the carry. Give him, give him three yards on that carry. Make it second down. Give him two yards. Make it second down and eight. Well, one thing about Matt Kendrick, he's drawing a crowd wherever he goes. I think if he'd run off the side. And going to the bench, I think he'd take three Titans with him. <laughs> okay. Leave it to Bob Walton. Phillips once again breaks huddle. Puts Kendrick in motion again, but it goes to Hatton up the middle. Breaks one cackle. He could go all the way. Goes Hatton. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Matt Hatton. Just rumbled. 54 yards for a rocket touchdown with 5.56 to go in the ball game. Matt Hatton goes up the middle. Give some of that credit, Bob, to who? Kendrick for opening up that outside game where Hatton can run right up the middle. Well, and give some of the credit to me. I think I, when I talked to Coach Blackstone, I said, why don't you try that play, Coach? Very well put there by Bob Walton. We didn't want to interrupt him there or nothing, but that's the reason he's up here in the press box with me. John Wayne Forker on to do the extra point for the Rockets. Hatton on the holds. Good snap, good hold, kick up, good kick. Make it 35-6 to six with 5.56 to go in the ball game. Matt Hatton just rumbled 54 yards for a Rocket touchdown. Point after kick converted by John Wayne Fortner. That put the Rockets on top, 35-6. to six with 5.56 left to go in the contest. Fortner again ready to kick off for the Rockets from his 40-yard line. Kick is off, a squib kick again, taken at the 35-yard line. Oh, no place that time by who? Who? Number 90, number 90, Troy Stewart comes out of nowhere for a nice tackle for the Rockets. So out comes the defensive unit for the Rockets. Looks like the starting defense still in the ball game with 5.52 to go in the contest. Here comes our man, number 72, Roger the Bad Cat Wilbur. As he's gonna go in and take the place of number 71, Ewing, at right tackle. So Roger Wilbur getting opportunity, opportunity to show what he can do on the defensive side of the ball. Bukowitz and company breaks huddle back in the offensive backfield. Also number one, that's Luke Daniel. He puts Shannon in motion to the left. Bukowitz, long count, takes the snap, rolls to his right, but he's got Troy Stewart in his face and he just throws it away. Nice decision that time by Bukowitz as he couldn't do anything 
with a 6-2 junior, Troy Stewart, right in his face. And Troy Stewart, Bob, having a whale of a defensive ball game tonight. That's my boy Troy, and I tell you, he knows how to play that defensive end, and he's grown so much as a player, but strength-wise, so much stronger than he was last year. Always played with a lot of heart, but now he's got some muscle to go with that heart. So Bukowitz eluding the tackler there, 5-17 to go in the contest. Rockets 35, Titans 6. Bukowitz rolls to his left. Roger Wilbur just pancakes the guy, and so does Hank Hager. Pass complete that time over on the far side of the field was the Titans. Gain of about five on the play as the player stays down, and that could, could prove, Bob, to be a, a serious injury for the Titans as that's number 34 down for them. That's uh, Joey Shannon down on the far side of the field for the Titans. So we have a player down on the field with 4.57 to go in the contest. Rockets on top, 5 to 6. You're listening to Golden Rocket Football on WYPC AM 1330 and your local cable channel 15. We're going to return it back to the station for, again for a word from our white jerseys on the field for the Rockets. Number 35, Hank Hager in the ball game for the Rockets, as well as number 67. We'll try to get the names and numbers for you. Number 67 is uh, Mr. Brown. New defensive left in, number 88 for the Rockets. That's Chris Tanner in the ball game. And still the original defensive backfield in the ball game, which is understandably so. Bukowitz under center for the Titans. Puts a man in motion to his right. Long count, takes a snap, rolls to his right. Oh my, good night Irene as Hank Hanger come flying. He looked like Bruce Smith coming from the left or the right outside linebacker. And just destroyed Bukowitz that time. A loss only, I guess that was a gracious spot. A loss only of about four on that play. So that's going to create fourth down and 12 to go for the Titans. So Bukowitz once again doing the punting for the Titans back deep for the Rockets. A couple new guys back there as well. Good snap off. Bukowitz punt is off. Not a bad punt. Nice spiraling punt. Nathan Arthur takes it on the 40. 45. Gets hit once and brings it up to the 46. Again, we'd like to see Nathan run a little more north and south, but uh, he picks up about three or four on that carry. So call it first down and 10 for the Rockets on their own 45 yard line with 3.45 to go in the contest. Rockets leading 35 to six. We have a new quarterback in the ball game for the Rockets as well, number 16. We'll get some new numbers. Rockets mass substitution, Hat up, Hatton up the middle once again on the ball carry. Gain for about two. I'm sorry, and be corrected once again. 21, Jared Arthur on the carry that time for the Rockets. Number 16 in the ball game for the Rockets. That's Sean For John Fortner. John Wayne Fortner as well as number nine, Jason Perkins. We'll try to pick these guys up for you. Some, some confusion right now. <laughs> Mass substitution. Rockets take the snap. Hands off to Hutch over the right side. Got some running room. Who could break it? Nice piece of running once again that time by Chris Hutchison as he picks up about 15, takes the ball all the way down to the Titan 35-yard line. Great block by Jake Everts as he triggered that play. Jake breaks it open. Another new rocket uh, in the game there is our buddy number 10. That's Andy Canterbury. He get an opportunity to play that split in. Okay, Reggie Alexander still in the ball game as well as Harry Turner. Fortner takes a snap, fumble on the play. Doesn't look good, and it's not. The exchange for the Rockets was a fumble. With 2.48 to go in the contest, Rockets turn it over. 35 to six as the Titan offensive unit comes onto the field. Looks like they're making a few substitutions as well. Defensive unit on the field for the Rockets. We'll try to get some numbers for you. Branch, Usley, Tanner. We still have the original starting lineup in the defensive backfield for the Rockets. All new white jerseys up front. New quarterback in the ball game for the Titans as well. Takes a snap.
that goes over the right side. Nothing doing there as Hank Hager actually had the tackle and lost it. Alvis Brown in the ball game for the Rockets on the stop. As Bob Walton's doing his best to get us the numbers here. Sam, Sam the man Corbin getting an opportunity to play. All right, Titans break huddle once again. 2.14 to go in the ball game. Rockets on top, 35 to 6. Titans takes the snap. Hands off, goes over the left side and hitting the backfield as Roger Wilbur and a whole host of Rockets. Man, oh man. Reagan Evans comes up. Looks like, looked like Ronnie Lott on that play as he just turned his body loose and actually kind of hurt himself more than he did the offensive player. He's so quick when he hit, made the lick, he hit himself. But uh, a young man by the name of Alan Ratcliffe getting an opportunity to play. He's going to be in the United States Air Force next year. Uh, good student, so we got some new jerseys. We'll get them in for you. Number 14 for the Rockets is Aaron Jenkins with an opportunity to play as he replaces the self-wounded Reagan Evans. Okay, Titans break huddle again with a minute 25 to go. Hands off, fumble on the play. Who's got it? Titans recover, but that's going to lose yardage on that play. Great defensive play by Troy Meade. He's just getting an opportunity to play. Calls the fumble for the Rockets. Okay, as the defensive unit comes back on the field for the... Or the punting unit, rather, comes back on the field for the Titans. David Napes, or, or Naps, getting an opportunity to play. One minute to go in the contest. Back deep for the Rockets, number 26, Sean Brennan. He is the only guy back to, to receive. Let's see what he can do with it. Bookwood's punt, low spiral. Going to try to catch it on the first bounce and does. Brennan comes to the near side, tries to get outside, turns on some jets, gets up to the 50-yard line, gain of about 10 on the return. So the Rockets are going to start right on the 50-yard line with 42 seconds to go in the ball game. Rockets lead 35 to 6. A familiar name in the lineup again, Adam Canner getting an opportunity to play, as well as number 76, Troy Meade, now playing on the offensive side. Coming into the ball game also, number 74, Alan Ratcliffe, and number 11, that's Marcus Ray. Okay, so the two offensive tackles out of the ball game for the Rockets, 75, Reggie Alexander, and number 50, Harry Turner. Fortner on the snap, fumble once again. Rockets having trouble getting the uh, handoff or getting the snap, and they lose another, another fumble. I'm sure Coach Blackstone is not real happy about that, and I assumed right, he's not very happy. Well, you, there's two ways of looking at this at that is you don't like to ever give it up, but it's a great opportunity to get some of these young players an opportunity to play at that varsity level. Okay, Hank Hager leads the defensive unit for the Rockets at linebacker. Number 35 is Hank Hager. Try to get some other players for you as well. As I am continuing to be shocked by the microphone. <laughs> Titans take the snap, a long snap. A lot of new faces and players on the field now. They pitch to their left. He's got some running room outside. He's going to gain the first down and a little more. Gain of about 13 on the carry that time for the Titans. So it's basically uh, JV unit against JV unit here. Downtown Alvis Brown in on the play number six. And we'll try to run Aaron Jenkins by uh, number 14. So the Rockets getting an opportunity to play Troy Meade, Jake Everts on the other side of the ball, as well as Aaron Radcliffe, Alan Radcliffe, pardon me, Hank the Horrible in the inside. So some new Rockets playing number six for the Rockets. Uh, we've already mentioned Alvis Brown and now uh, Sean Brennan. Titans handoff uh, keeper around the left side. Nick Frisbee sniffed that one out and going to drop him for a loss. Wow. Nice defensive play that time by number 30, Nick Frisbee. Kind of surprised to see him in there, but maybe the coach need, thinks he needs a little more conditioning. I don't know. That's the reason he's down there and we're up here. It's going to pretty much wrap it up. Five, four, three, two, one. Rockets put their first victory in the book tonight. As the Rockets come out on top here in Portsmouth, Ohio, defeating the Portsmouth Notre Dame Titans by the score of 35 to 6. We're going to send it back to the station for a word from all of our sponsors and then come back and wrap up 
with the post game report. He's now the uh, all-purpose uh, leader in the history of the, the Huskies. Close to a first down. That was fickle. You know, you don't hit Ohio State for that many yards rushing very often. No, you don't. You know, you're, you're, you're really right. They were number two in the Big Ten last year and only giving up 110 yards a game. And they had 17 games less than a 100-yard rusher over the last 37 games. So they do stop the run real well. You know, there's some inexperienced people in this defensive front, and like Coach Cooper said, by the time we get into the Big Ten, I think we're going to have a real good football team, but we do need some experience. First down for Seward. Hello! He took turnover! Matt Finkus. Brent, they wanted the big play. Inside the 25-yard line, Vrabel wrapped it up after the hit. 17 opponents to less than 100 yards rushing. They haven't done it today, but they got to get started here in the second half with how they want to play the rest of the year.